This video is made possible by CodeNotary.io, tamper-proof notarization for all your digital objects. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to go, once again, after maybe a two-year hiatus, we're going to go back into the open VMS world and the wonderful world of uh, DEC networking. Um, what you see here on, on this page is I made recently a friend, maybe four or five months ago. His name is Super Team Saniel. He's up uh, somewhere in the East Coast. And he is a very special person because he just likes to have fun with, uh, with networks and specifically with, uh, with, with uh, open VMS or DEC networks. And he has built over the years an amazing, uh, I want to say almost collection museum kind of collection of working systems connected to each other of the strangest uh, of the strangest type uh, and what i like about him is that he does this all in a play-like fashion um, it's not obviously it's not uh production for him and so he just does it because of because it's because it's fun and I agree with him. And so he has a collection of web pages. Sometimes it's a bit confusing, but that's the whole beauty of it. So for instance, he has this web page here, Saniel, where uh, he shows in theory here, the protocol, the, the layout of his network, but it's really hard to read here because there's so many things here. But um, here, for instance, he has a list of all the machines. So impvax, uh, this is actually a machine that I'm also connected to and he has a network uh, number here over HECnet. In a previous video about two years ago, I did mention HECnet, which is the worldwide network of DEC enthusiasts. And we, of course, in the mainframe world have now HNet, which is our NGE network for enthusiasts all over the world. HECnet is significantly larger. It must have, I think at this time, 400 nodes or so, three, 400 nodes for sure. Whereas we are maybe at 60 nodes or something like that. But uh, it's not about size. Size doesn't matter. It's about the fun you can have. So he, in this page here, he allocates all his systems. He has here, uh, SimH means it's emulated. What we call Hercules in our world, they call uh, SimH in the, in the uh, digital equipment uh, world. <coughs> so it's an emulator for a VAC server. This is running OpenVMS. And Decnate Phase 4 is the is the uh, protocol kind of like we have tcp ip or tcp in the in the internet world uh deck had its own protocol called uh phase they had phase three phase four phase five even and that was only over ethernet obviously but it has its own protocol uh, and so here this machine that i'm connected to is kind of a router he says then he has another one which is actually um a Cisco router. Now Cisco routers were also able to um, to deal with this network uh, protocol because back then a lot of customers have, were still running DEC machines and so uh, as you can see here he has a Cisco router running uh, Cisco iOS and doing both TechNet Apple Talk and uh, IP. Then he has here some uh, some other router uh, this is another emulator machine, another emulated server, another emulated server. I'm connected to all of those, I think. Here is something else. Uh, here is an emulated PDP-11, which is kind of the predecessor of the VAX machine. VAX, as you know, uh, were the first 32-bit machines by digital equipment, whereas uh, the PDP, the predecessor, was only 16-bit. Highly successful machines. There's, you still see them running uh, all over the place today. I have one at home, actually. I have a PDP 1134, uh, and here it's running RSX11. Here's uh, Ubuntu running um, DECnet. Um, and so some people don't know that, but until very recently, Linux, the Linux kernel was also able to uh, understand and speak the DEC protocol. And the last uh, kernel was the Ubuntu 1404 that was able to do it. And I have a machine um, connected like this, and I'll show it soon. And you see here all kind of machines. A lot of them are obviously emulated. Also, Windows, by the way, was, um, was until recently able to do DECnet. I think they dropped that now. Uh, Windows NT was able to do DECnet. Uh, here's a real machine here. 
I have a real machine as well. I have a DS20 um, server, an alpha, alpha server by, uh, by digital equipment. And then here even has a power Macintosh doing DECnet because Mac was also able to do DECnet. And uh, even <laughs> Microsoft Windows for Workgroups 3.11 was able to do DEC Phase 4. So you can see here all kind of uh, interesting things that he has, uh, many, many machines. He even emulates the Cisco router sometimes. Uh, so there's emulators for Cisco routers, so he does those as well. He emulates a DEC PDP-10, which, by the way, I think Microsoft developed in the early, early days some of their software on. I think then they went to a PDP-20. Um, but yeah, um, so you can see here. And then there is the DEC Python. There's also a DECnet emulator written in Python, um, which also implements the protocol and all kinds of machine, NetBSD, obviously, OpenBSD, BSD, VAX, Alpha Linux, Solaris was able to do it, all kinds of machines. And he has many more uh, pages. So it's kind of sometimes a little bit uh, a discovery process with Super Team's web pages. He has them all over the place. As he goes, he makes new pages up. Um, this is also by him. So, you know, DECnet is kind of relates to the MAC address. So you need to have a MAC address that, that matches your, your network uh, number. And so this is important for uh, when we emulate VAXs, we need to make up a MAC address that matches the network number that we were given. And who gives the network numbers? Um, there's a person in, in Sweden, I think. who assigns, yeah, so you can see here, uh, I've been actually on this page before in previous videos, there is here a, so he has this machine here, which is kind of the head node, the one that controls the, uh, the all the network numbers. And here you see all the machines uh, connected on the HECnet network. And I think we can now uh, maybe 300 uh, machines. A lot of them are emulated. Some of them are physical, like this one's here. When they're emulated, usually they mention it mm, when you say SIMH. So all the SIMH are emulated. All the others are real machines. Somewhere here is also my own machine. Uh, here's my machine. I'm network number 31141. And as you can see here, it's uh, well, this information is wrong, but uh, so as you can see, this is a real network. It's uh, there's this person here who controls the node database, and um, and so of course uh, I I have as I've shown in my previous video, I have several uh, VAXs running. One is a full VAX cluster, and I made a video about that. And one other is a, I wanted to have an instance of OpenVMS running in the cloud that would both connect to the HECnet, to this network, as well as also connect to my beloved HNet. And I think that would have been kind of a first one, a first uh, have a machine that's connected to both networks at the same time. Since mainframes don't re typically have uh, DECnet implementations, so you can have a real mainframe be connecting both, but OpenVMS can do both. And the reason for that is that there is a program called JNet uh, OpenVMS that implements um, that implements the network job entry protocol for OpenVMS. As you can see here, uh, well known, some people looking around. And so I was able to found, find it. And so this video is gonna show how we got uh, OpenVMS connected to both uh, the HECnet protocol as well as to HNet. So let me show you what I got here. So I have a couple of sessions. Um, let me choose one. Okay, so let's start with this one. Um, let me make this one bigger. So this is my uh, giant 
OpenVMS cluster, as you can see here, this is running OpenVMS on VAX 7.3. As you know, OpenVMS then was migrated to the Alpha CPU, to the Alpha architecture, and then later on to the Itanium. And now, as we speak, it's being ported to the uh, x86 64 bit architecture. So I think next year in 2022, we'll have OpenVMS 9. Dot something running on uh, Intel and AMD CPUs. But this is my. Uh, my cluster and if I want to see here my nodes you can see here this is uh, my cluster running monitor cluster this will take a while to uh, establish connection to all the other nodes and I've always said that the most perfect clustering technology that ever existed is the DEC cluster technology it's real single system uh, image I think it's far beyond even the IBM uh, Sysplex technology, which is really uh, dependent on having coupling facility and the locking mechanism in place. Uh, that's not very scalable in my opinion, but uh, the DEC cluster is an amazing technology. I studied it at length in uh, college and university, and we implemented a, a uh, something on Linux called Open Mushix. Um, which, uh, oh, sorry, Open Mosix, which was uh, trying to do the same thing and did the same thing. So open single system image, transparent single system image clustering for Linux, which was based on the architecture of the DEC cluster. And so I have I've been running this image here, which was uh, built uh, uh, together with a friend in uh, Finland. And it's been running for a few years uninterrupted. And I've shown this in a previous video and everything is fine. However, uh, what I did not do with this system is I did not connect it to HNet because I would have to open, this is running in my home, I would have to open up uh, all kind of ports uh, out and in to, um, to make sure that uh, I can connect to the HackNet network and uh, I just don't know how secure the HackNet protocol is because I don't know it very well. So I decided to not have this uh, machine um, be on the HackNet itself, uh, but I play with it a lot. I have some um, I have some uh, let me see here for instance I wrote my famous N-Queens program here which calculates uh, the how many queens can fit on a chessboard of N times N size and um, uh, this machine has a Fortran compiler, it has a basic compiler, it has a C compiler, PL1 compiler, some uh, COBOL compiler and some other stuff. So I was I'm always having a lot of fun with this, uh, with this image here. It has about seven nodes in the cluster and, um, and has a giant file system based on ZFS. So it's really a giant, giant um, cluster that I'm running in my home. Uh, way oversized for the stuff that I need to do. But, uh, but it's fun. So I didn't want to use this for, uh, for my project of having an OpenVMS instance that connects both to HackNet and to HNet. So what did I do? I've also had for years another implementation of, um, of OpenVMS running um, with a single system image. So uh, sorry, with a single system, not in a cluster. And um, I moved that one to the cloud from my home uh, up to the Google Cloud. And and this is uh, the one that we're seeing here. So uh, this is the machine here. It's running, as I said, in the Google Cloud. Uh, very stable. It's been up, I think, show system. It's been up now for 21 days uninterrupted. And this machine, if I, if I do show network, you will see that it's connected to two networks. One is uh, DECnet. So this is Technet Phase 4 with this node name, and here is um, the node number. And then it's also connected to uh, TCP IP with this IP number here on the internal network. So um, now with these two networks, we really have everything we need to, to connect both to, um, to HECnet and to HNet. So if I want to, for instance, set those Infax, it's one of the machines uh, run by SuperTeam that if you remember if I do that, it will, as you can see, will instantly try to connect me to the Infax node 
and that's not going over TCP IP. Set host is an uh, is a DECnet protocol uh, implementation, so that's how uh, it works. So I could now log in there and do some stuff on his machine, and from there I could log into another machine, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and explore the whole DECnet. So I can also copy files from his machine to my machine, which I do regularly because he maintains a more up-to-date version of the Node database. And so that all works fine. But I also have this thing here. Let's make this a little bit bigger. I also have this thing where I can say send command to relay. And you all know that relay is my uh, HNet um, service machine that implements all kinds of services. So let's do help. And of course, this all goes at um, NGE speed, network job entry speed, which was never meant to be uh, kind of uh, interactive, such as we are used today with the TCP IP protocol. This, the, this protocol was from the 80s, where sometimes you would send a message to somebody, it would only be delivered after a day or two sometimes, because it was depending on uh, dial-up lines a lot. So here is the response from my HNet server. Um, these are all the services enabled as of March 7, 2020. Um, you can see here, this is all kind of services we have. Um, so let's say, for instance, send uh, command relay cause hacknet. So now it's going to invoke this uh, service here, cause, where we give an input and the cow will create a, a kind of, a, yeah, as you can see here, a drawing with the text that we gave it. So the cow now says hacknet. I can also say uh, send command relay 03 2020 because that's the month of March 2020. And it should come back with a whole calendar anytime soon. Um, oh, sorry, send calendar, of course, I didn't give it the word calendar, because that's what it tells me here, calendar, month, and the year, and it will now come back with the calendar for 2020, uh, for March 2020, yes, uh, if I say uh, only 2020, it will come back with something a little bit more sensical. And we'll see it in a second. And soon we're also going to see how this all works behind the scenes. I just want to show you that uh, both networks work just fine. So we got the full year calendar. Um, then also we can say uh, send command relay sudoku. And of course we can also chat from here on the on the relay chat server. All the good stuff that we've seen in, in some of my previous videos. And as you know, I have this huge fascination lately with uh, the network job entry protocol. So this all works fine. Uh, last thing I want to do, forecast weather um, Moscow, let's say. Let's see how cold it is in Moscow today. And you know from other videos that this goes to Relay, Relay gets the command and then runs a Linux bash script which obtains all this information from the internet. Uh, so uh, it's nine Celsius in, uh, in uh, Moscow right now with seven kilometers per hour wind. I can also say I want to forecast and it will come back with uh, but just to for, with the graphical forecast, as you have all seen this before. So this all works just fine. I could also send emails from here through network job entry protocol. You can see here it's quite cold, actually minus six. It's going to get to minus six uh, tonight in Moscow and then rise tomorrow at uh, noon all the way to six Celsius. So and then no rain uh, in Moscow. Alrighty, so uh, this all works fine. Now, how does, and of course I can also do ping, um, I don't know, yahoo.com. I can also go out over TCP IP directly to the internet. How does this work? So on, if I do show, um, uh, 
if I, it, there is an, um, a program installed here called JNet, as I've so shown you before, that implements the network job entry protocol. And the protocol is implemented with a, as usual with a route table. So let me do type. Make sure. So there is a route table type. Uh, so you can see this is the route table that I use. All the nodes that I can reach are defined here. And uh, then I have Um, I have here a route defined to my relay uh, node on on another machine, also in the Google Cloud, and that's how they talk to each other and implement the network job entry protocol. I can also send messages to TSO users. I can send messages to VM users. I can send messages to Linux users. I can send files. I can receive files. All that stuff works just fine. And of course, I can also uh, telnet out to other machines. I can SSH out, all that stuff works. Now let's see how this is all implemented. Here is, the, I'm logged in right now on the same server where this OpenVMS is running because OpenVMS is actually being emulated by the SimH emulator. And if I do this, you will see that there is a SimH line here you can see here, um, the SimH VAX, which, which uh, starts an instance of, uh, of a VAX, and then inside there we have, um, we have OpenVMS installed. So let's go check it out. As you can see here, I have several disks here, and um, they're still growing, so there's a lot of space here for them to grow. And these are um, the normal disks for the OpenVMS installation. And then these are the emulators that I use, as you can see here. And, um, and then there's an initiation, vax ini, which kind of tells it how to initialize this uh, emulated vax. So I give it 512 megabytes, which back in the days was a huge vax. But of course, um, this fits in the smallest Linux instance you can rent from uh, Google Cloud, by the way. The, the smallest instance from Google is three and a half gigabytes. So it fits in very, very comfortably. Uh, comfortably. And then you can see here, we have the disk. And we can also attach tapes. Um, and at some point then attach a CD-ROM. And um, I can have console, telnet lines, coming in and uh, and then this is the network interface so I actually needed a lot of help from Supra Tim uh, to make um, TCP IP work so Decknate, Decknate I made work very quickly but TCP IP wasn't working and the reason is that if you look at how the network is defined here there's quite a few network interfaces in this uh, virtual machine running on the Google Cloud so I have the ETH0 is the one provided by um, by Google. Then I have here a tap interface, another tap interface, a VDE interface, which is maybe not the fastest way, but it's it's a good way to uh, attach um, emulated uh, deck machines. And all this then go out through this interface here. So this was a little bit more than I can do because I don't I'm not very familiar with the VDE um, network protocol, which is supported by Linux, obviously, and is supported by, by the CMH protocol. And so he made this all work. And, um, and so uh, this all goes out like this. And, uh, and then there's one more area, which is the end progs. So these are um, Linux programs that help you uh, connect to the DECnet protocol. So because as I mentioned at the beginning, both my OpenVMS 
is connected to the uh, Hacknet protocol um, network, but also the Linux that you see here itself, the Ubuntu itself is also connected. And I can do like DN, uh, there's some neighbor, for instance, this, this program, it will show me all the neighboring networks you can see here. So Linux can see uh, Hacknet right now and is connected to Hacknet. And I could do things like uh, DN, um, where is it? DN login. And then I could, I could also log in now to another OpenVMS. I could from here actually log in uh, to uh, OpenVMS without going through TCP IP. Uh, so I can do all those things. The, I can do DN ping to ping other machines, um, DNF info, and stuff like that. Um, I can, of course, also use TCP IP to connect to my OpenVMS machine, which is running on, on this, on this uh, virtual machine. So I can just do Telnet 100, because as you saw, this was, this was the IP address of uh, OpenVMS. You can see it shows up immediately. So I can do, I could log in from here. And I'm in. I can also FTP to it. I can do all the standard TCP IP stuff. So I have two completely separate networks that I can reach this machine with TCP IP and Hacknet. But now because of JNet, I also have a third protocol that's running on OpenVMS, which is JNet. And as you can see, I can, uh, I can reach it from HNet very simply. Um, we can also uh, show, um, what else can we show here? Let me uh, call up a 3270 session and let's talk to OpenVMS. Shall we do that? So I'm connected here to my ZPDT, which is connected to my H network network. So you can see here. So let's do something like this. Uh, we can close this. Let's go back to my um, to my open BMS system. And let's try first this one. So I say send main at uh, Moshix4. Because this is, as you can see here, this is my um, Moshix4 node running ZVM on my ZPDT system. Hello from OpenVMS 7.3. And of course, this, as I said, this is not meant to be like uh, real time speed, but it's it's not slow. It's uh, reasonable, reasonable fast. And here it is. Um, so HOU Vax one, which is the node name for this machine on the NGE network on HNet is saying hello from OpenVMS. So now I can say, uh, tell system at HOUVAX1, hello from ZVM on ZPDT. And it will reach out here as well. And we'll get a notification when it arrives. The other thing, of course, I can do is I could also just send it a file send file and it will it will send the file there so these two machines can now work over can talk to each other over NGE and um, and uh, and also, of course they could also talk to each other over TCP IP because if I do a telnet here and um, and connect to the IP address to the outside IP address of my uh, open VMS machine here, which I don't want to say for security purposes, but it has one. Um, then I can also connect uh, to direct from to it from from my ZVM using the uh, TCP/IP protocol. So there are several ways that these machines can speak. The only limitation is that ZVM does not have an implementation of DECnet. Um, if we could make Python work on ZVM, then we could probably emulate it with Python. Um, Python works on ZOS, however, and on Zlinux. So on Zlinux, um, it's very easy to connect to that as well. Um, so as you can see here, this all works just fine. And um, and uh, if I do here a relay help, 
uh, I'm connected to it as well. So both machines see all other machines in the network and everything is fine. And um, um, that's as far as I wanted to show about OpenVMS. The tricky part is obviously making all these network interfaces not um, bother each other. Uh, and that's why on this machine here, uh, on this uh, machine, I had to get the help of, uh, of Super Tim, who helped me to implement um, this VDE network interface that you see here. Okay, so um, that's really very, very uh, powerful if you have all these network interfaces working on the same machine inside the virtual machine on the Google Cloud. And I can now go out either from Linux here, I'm at the Linux level as you can see here, um, but I'm also connected from this Linux machine to the HackNet network. Then I can also uh, connect from Linux here over TCP IP to my OpenVMS instance using a Telnet or SSH or something like that. And then the OpenVMS guest running on top of the emulator, you can see here, I'm running here on this emulator. This now can also connect to the internet over TCP IP. It's obviously connected to HackNet because uh, as you saw, I'm able to uh, see it even here at this level here. And finally, because of the JNet uh, program, um, it's also able to, and it is connected to the HNet network. So um, I think this is kind of a, a, a fun thing to do, have all this amazing networks connected to each other. And we come back to the initial comments I made about, um, about SuperTeam and uh, his bestiary here of uh, operating systems all connected to each other with DeckNet and even some Apple Net, Apple Talk uh, networks. Um, so it's a lot of fun. And um, uh, there is some knowledge uh, that needs to be gained at the beginning, how HackNet works, uh, the whole thing here with the MAC address and the DeckNet area number and the node number. But once you figure that out, it's actually, uh, it, works, uh, it works just fine. We should have here my machine here as well. Do we see it? No, um, we can't see. I don't think my machine is here, but, um, but it's there somewhere. And as you can see now also Super Team with uh, my help has also gotten a, a machine on up and running um, that's connected to both NGE and um, to, um, to DeckNet. And he's using for that, he's using Linux on S390X. So that is an additional thing that I haven't done yet, which is running the Linux on top of um, um, the Hercules emulator or on ZPDT. Inside there, install the network, uh, network job entry protocol that I have pointed to in the past, GitHub, no shakes. There is a implementation here that you can download. If you go to GitHub Moshix, you will see here. And where is it? Mm, oh, here it is, Linux NGE. So you download, download this protocol implementation, compile it, run it on your Linux, And from there, then you can, uh, of course, uh, reach out with NGE. But there's also no reason why you cannot install the same Python programs that emulate uh, the DeckNet protocol as well in Z Linux, And that's what Super Team has done here. So um, this is this machine here. So very interesting. So we have all this, all these networks and all these operating systems and they all talk to each other because there's standards. And that's the power of standards because we have HackNet, we have DeckNet, uh, which HackNet, which is implemented on top of DeckNet. Then we have HNet, which is implemented on top of JNet. Uh, NGE, and then we have um, TCP IP, and there's all these operating systems can talk to each other because they can emulate or they can speak this this protocols. So it's a lot of fun. I thought I'll make a video about it and show it to you. And um, and uh, if you have any questions or if you would like to get your own systems up and running, you can drop some comments uh, below this video. And if you um, want to connect to us. 
uh, you're welcome to reach out to me and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get you started and connect to us. Since my previous video on HNET, I think about 10, 15 people have reached out to me and we have uh, uh, connected to all these people. Some are real mainframes. Um, as you can see here, by the way, uh, where is it? So we have also uh, the University of Leipzig has a real mainframe and of that mainframe uh, we configured it so that uh, they can also connect to HNET. I recently became the sysprog for ZVM on that machine. So I manage uh, ZVM and all the ZOS instances and set Linux instances on the ZVM. And, um, and of course, one of the first things I did is, as you can see here, I connected uh, that also to HNET. So that's the address of that machine. Um, so, as, so as I said, about 10, 15 people reached out to me. Some connected their own real mainframes to me. Some others got um, uh, MVS 3.8 connected and some others. By the way, we also have a an MVS 3.8 connected. I don't want to say too much about it, but if I do uh, HOU MVS 2 CPQ CP level, um, oops, I sent the wrong command actually. Uh, special message RSCS command HOU MVS 2 actually came back. So um, as you can see here, this is OSVS 2.3.8. So that's MVS 3.8 JS2 running on an emulated 3083 processor. That's TK4, which you know from Jurgen Winkelmann's amazing TK4. And it's running an NGE 38 implementation written by the genial and amazing uh, Bob Polmenter, uh, with whom I've been working together on testing this and making it work. So I can also do something like uh, command H A H O U M B S two uh, D A, which you know from JS two and from M B S. Uh, display all active uh, jobs, and it will come back and show me or show us <laughs> um, all the active uh, jobs running on that machine. So if you have a bunch of initiators, JS two is running. Uh, uh, this is VTAM. T S O is running and uh, and the ng38 a product program which implements the the protocol so i could also send if i log into that machine i will also be able to send that user a tso user a message and the TS tso user can send me a message or commands or files so all this is running we have now a fully fledged uh, ng implementation across all the operating systems that run on the mainframe we have uh, VSC can connect, we have MVS, ZOS can connect, ZVM. Uh, as I was saying, we have ZVM, we have VM370 uh, working just fine. We have Zilinux, we have OpenVMS, we have even the Cisco routers uh, being able to connect to it. So, um, and um, a lot of uh, operating systems are all interconnected now. And we're finally bridged between the amazing work that the HECnet people have done with uh, their DEC machines and our amazing community here um, with our mainframes. And so the two sides can now freely talk to each other. Um, OpenVMS is amazing, RSDS is amazing, RSX, all the DEC machines are uh, long been a passion of mine. And of course, our mainframe stuff is amazing. And this all works now very freely and we can exchange data without having to resort to FTP, SSH and ASCII conversions and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's all I wanted to show for today. And if you have any questions, if you want to connect to HNET or if you want to connect to HECnet, if you want to interconnect, then please reach out. We'll be very happy to do so. Thank you for watching and have a great day.